Welcome to Gum TV. My name is Ange. Please subscribe, like, and share to get more documentaries of different countries. And don't forget to comment to tell us which country you would like us to talk about in the next video. And today it's about China. You are going to know more about China's history, politics, military, economy, science, and technology, infrastructure, and culture. And also the five fun show the People's Republic of China is a country in East Asia. They're the world's most populous country with a population of more than 1.4 billion people. China spans five geographical time zones and borders 14 countries, the second most of any country in the world after Russia, covering an area of approximately 9.6 billion square kilometers, it is the world's third or fourth largest country. The country consists of 23 provinces, five autonomous regions, four municipalities and two special administrative regions, Hong Kong and Macau. The national capital is Beijing and the most popular city and financial center is Shanghai. Modern Chinese traces their origins to a crowd of civilization in the fertile basin of the Yellow River in the North China Plain. The semi-legendary Xi'an dynasty in the 21st century BCE and the well-attested Shang and Chu dynasties developed a bureaucratic political system to serve hereditary monarchies or dynasties. Chinese writing, Chinese classic literature and hundred schools of thought emerged during this period and impressed China and its neighbors for centuries to come. In the 3rd century BCE, Qin wars of unification created the first Chinese empire, the short-lived Qin dynasty. The Qin was followed by more stable Han dynasty from 206 BCE to 220 CE, which established a model of nearly two millennia in which the Chinese empire was one of the world's foremost economic powers. The empire expanded fractured and reunified, was conquered and re-established, absorbed foreign religions, ideas, and made world-leading scientific advances such as four great inventions, which are gunpowder, paper, the compass, and printing. After centuries of disunion following the fall of the Han, the Sui, and the Tang, dynasties achieved what the Roman Empire could not reunification of the empire. The multi-ethnic Tang welcomed foreign trade and culture that came over the Silk Road and adapted Buddhism to Chinese needs. The early modern Song Dynasty from 960 up to 1279 became increasingly urban and commercial. The civilian scholar official or literate used the examination system and the doctrines of Neo-Confucianism to replace the military aristocrats of early dynasties. The Mongol invasion established the Yuan dynasty in 1279, but the Ming dynasty from 1369 up to 1644 re-established Han Chinese control. The Manchu late King dynasty nearly doubled the empire's territory and established a multi ethnic state that was the basis of the modern Chinese nation but suffered heavy losses to foreign imperialism in the 19th century. The Chinese monarchy collapsed in 1912 with the Qihain Revolution when the Republic of China replaced the Qin dynasty. Japan invaded China in 1937, starting the Second Sino-Japanese War and temporarily halting the civil war between the Chinese Communist Party and the Kuomintang. The surrender and expulsion of Japanese forces from China in 1945 left power vacuum in the country, which led to renewed fighting between the CCP and the Kuomintang. The civil war ended in 1949 with the division of Chinese territory. The CCP established the People's Republic of China on the mainland, while Kuomintang led ROC government retreated to the island of Taiwan. 
both claimed to be the sole legitimate government of China. Although the United Nations has recognized the People's Republic of China as the sole representation since 1971. From 1959 up to 1961, the PRC implemented an economic and social campaign called Great Leap Forward that resulted in an estimated 15 to 55 million deaths. Mostly through starvation, China conducted a series of economic reforms since 19. 19- 78 and entered into the World Trade Organization in 2005. China is currently governed as a unitary one-party socialist republic by the CCP. China is a permanent member of the United Nations Security Council and founding member of several multilateral and regional cooperation organizations such as the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, the Silk Road Fund, the New Development Fund, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, the RCEP, and is a member of the BRICS, uh, the G8 plus 5, the G20, the APEC, and the East Asia Summit. It ranks among the lowest in international measurements of civil liberties, government transparency, freedom of the press, freedom of religion and ethnic minorities. The Chinese authorities have been criticized by political descendants and human rights activists for widespread human rights abuses, including political repressions, mass censorship, mass surveillance of their citizens and violent suppression of protests. China is the world's largest economy by GDP. By purchasing power party, uh, the second largest economy by nominal GDP, and the second wealthiest country. The country is one of the fastest growing major economies and the world's largest manufacturer and exporter. China is a recognized nuclear weapon state with the world's largest standing army by military personnel and second largest defense budget. China is considered to be a potential superpower due to its large markets, growing military strength, economic potential, and influence in international affairs. Politics The Chinese constitution states that the People's Republic of China is a socialist state governed by the People's Democratic Dictatorship that is led by working class and based on alliance of workers and peasants and the state institutions shall practice the principle of democratic centralism. The People's Republic of China is one of the world's only socialist state governed by a communist party. The Chinese government has been variously described as communist and socialist but also authoritarian, with heavy restrictions in many areas, most notably against free access to the internet, freedom of press, freedom of assembly, the right to have the children, free formation of social organizations, and freedom of religion. Although the Chinese Communist Party describes China as a socialist consultative democracy, the country is commonly described as an authoritarian one-party surveillance state and dictatorship. Its current political, ideological, and economic system has been termed by its leaders as a consultative democracy, people's democratic dictatorship, socialism with Chinese characteristics, and the socialist market economy, respectively. Government China is a one-party state led by the Chinese Communist Party. The National People's Congress in 2018 altered the country's constitution to remove the two-term limit of holding the presidency of China, permitting the current leader Xi Jinping to remain president of China and general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party for an unlimited time, earning criticism for creating dictatorial governance. The president is the titular head of state elected by the National People's Congress. The premier is the head of government, presiding over the state council composed of four vice premiers and the heads of ministries and commissions. The incumbent president is 
Xi Jinping, who is also the general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party and the chairman of the Central Military Commission, making him China's paramount leader. The incumbent premier is Li Kenqiang, who is also a senior member of the CCP Politburo Standing Committee, Chinese de facto top decision-making body. Political concerns in China include growing gap between rich and poor and government corruption. Nonetheless, the level of public support for the government and its management of the nation is high with 80 to 95 percent of Chinese citizens expressing satisfaction with central government territorial disputes. Ever since its establishment after Chinese civil war, the People's Republic of China has claimed that the territory is governed by the Republic of China, a separate political entity today commonly known as Taiwan, as a part of its territory. It regards the island of Taiwan as its Taiwan province, Kinemen and Matsu as part of Fujia province and islands of Republic of China controls in the South China Sea as a part of Hainan province and Guangdong province. These claims are controversial because of the complicated cross strait relations, with the People's Republic of China treating the One China Principle as one of its most important diplomatic principles. Land Border Disputes China has resolved its land borders with 12 out of 14 neighboring countries, having pursued substantial compromises in most of them. As of 2022, China currently has a disputed land border with India, Sino-Indian border disputes and Bhutan. Maritime border disputes China is additionally involved in maritime disputes with multiple countries over the ownership of several small islands in the East and South China Seas such as Sokata Rock and Senkanku Islands and the entirety of South China Sea Islands, along with the EEZ disputes over East China Seas. Social, political issues and human rights. China uses a massive espionage network of cameras, facial recognition software, sensors, and surveillance of personal technology as means of social control of persons living in the country. The Chinese democracy movement, social activists, and some members of the Chinese Communist Party believe in the need for social and political reform. While economic and social controls have been significantly relaxed in China since the 1970s, political freedom is still totally restricted. The Constitution of the People's Republic of China states that the fundamental rights of citizens include freedom of speech, freedom of the press, the right to fair trial, freedom of religion, universal suffrage, and property rights. However, in practice, these provisions do not afford significant protection against criminal prosecution by the state. Although some criticism of the government policies and the ruling Communist Party are related, censorship of political speech and information, most notably on the internet, are routinely used to prevent collective action. China is regularly accused of large-scale repression and human rights abuses in Tibet and Xinjiang, including violent police trackdowns and religious suppressions. In Xinjiang, at least one million Uyghurs and other ethnic and religious minorities have been detained in mass detention camps, officially termed vocational education and training centers. And they are changing the political thinking of detainees, their identities, and their religious beliefs. According to the U.S. Department of State, actions including political indoctrination, torture, physical and psychological abuse, forced sterilization, sexual abuse, and forced labor are common in these facilities. The state has also sought to control offshore reporting the tensions of Xinjiang intimidating foreign-based reporters by detaining their family members. According to the 2020 report Chinese, Treatment of the Uyghurs meets the UN definition of genocide, and several groups called for UN investigation. 
On the 19th January 2021, the United States Secretary of State Mike Pompeo announced that the United States Department of State had determined that genocide and global studies from Pew Research Center in 2014 and 2017 ranked the Chinese government's restriction on religion as among the highest in the world. Despite low to moderate rankings for religious related social hostilities in the country, the Global Slavery Index estimated that in 2016 more than 3.8 million people are living in condition of modern slavery, or 0.25% of the population, including victims of human trafficking, forced labor, forced marriage, child labor, and state imposed forced labor. The state-imposed forced system was formally abolished in 2013, but it is not clear to which extent its various practices have stopped. The Chinese penal system includes labor prison factories, detention centers, and radiation camps, collectively known as Laogai. Reform through labor the Laogai Research Foundation in the United States estimated that there were over 1,000 slave labor prisons in camps in China. In 2019, a study called the Mass Retraction of More Than 400 Scientific Papers on Organ Transplantation because of fears the organs were obtained unethically from Chinese prisoners. While the government says, 10,000 transplants occur each year, a report by the Fulan Gong linked IETAC alleged that between 60,000 and 100,000 organs are transplanted each year and claimed that this gap was being made up by the executed prisoners of conscience. Military With nearly 2.2 million active troops, the People's Liberation Army is the largest standing military force in the world commanded by the Central Military Commission. China has the second largest military reserve force only behind North Korea. The People's Liberation Army is considered one of the world's most powerful militaries and has rapidly modernized in the recent decades. The People's Liberation Army consists of the ground force, the navy, the air force, the rocket force and the strategic support force. According to the Chinese government, military budget for 2022 totaled to 230 billion US dollars, constituting the world's second largest military budget. Although the military expenditures GDP ratio with 1.3% of GDP is below world average. However, many authorities including CIPRI and the US Office of Secretary of Defense claim that China hides its real level of military spending, which is allegedly much higher than the official budget. The People's Revolution Army additional holds the world's third largest stockpile of nuclear weapons and the world's second largest navy by tonnage. Economy Since 2010, China has had the world's second largest economy in terms of nominal GDP totaling approximately to 18 trillion US dollars as for 2021. In terms of purchasing power parity, China's economy has been the largest in the world since 2014, according to the World Bank. China is also the world's fastest growing major economy. According to the World Bank, China's GDP grew from 150 billion US dollars in 1978 to 14 point 28 trillion by 2019. China's economic growth has been consistently above 6% since the introduction of economic reforms in 1978. China is also the world's largest exporter and second largest importer of goods. Between 2010 and 2019, China's contribution to global GDP growth has been 25% to 39%. It is the largest engine of global growth of the world economy, accounting for 25 up to 30% global total expansion since the financial crisis of 2008 and 2009. As of 2021, 
China accounts for 18% of the world economy by GDP nominal. China had one of the largest economies in the world for most of the past 2,000 years, during which it has seen cycles of prosperity and decline. Since economic reforms began in 1978, China has developed into a highly diversified economy and one of the most consequential players in international trade. Major sectors of competitive strength include manufacturing, retail, mining, steel, textiles, automobiles, energy generation, green energy, banking, electronics, telecommunication, real estate, e-commerce, and tourism. China has three out of the ten largest stock exchanges in the world, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, that together have a market capitalization of over 15.9 trillion US dollars as of October 2020. China has four out of the world's top 10 most competitive financial centers which are Shanghai, Hong Kong, Beijing and Shenzhen. which is more than any country in 2020 Global Financial Centers Index. By 2035, China's four cities, Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, and Shenzhen are projected to be among the global 10 largest cities by nominal GDP, according to a report by Oxford Economics. China has been the world's number one manufacturer since 2010. After overtaking the US, which had been number one for the previous hundred years, China has also been number two in high tech manufacturing since 2012, according to the US National Science Foundation. China is the second largest retail market in the world next to the United States. China leads the world in e commerce, accounting for 40% of global market share in 2016 and more than 50% of the global market share in 2019. China is the world's leader in electric vehicles, manufacturing and buying half of all the plug-in electric cars in the world in 2018. China is also the leading producer of batteries for electric vehicles as well as several key raw materials for materials. China had 174 GW of installed solar capacity by the end of 2018, which amounts to more than 40% of the global solar capacity. Foreign and some Chinese sources have claimed that official Chinese government statistics overstate China's economic growth. However, several Western academics and institutions have stated that China's economic growth is higher than indicated by official figures. Others, such as the Economist Intelligence Unit, state that while there is evidence China's GDP data is smoothened, they believe that China's nominal and real GDP data are broadly accurate. China has a large informal economy which arose as a result of the country's economy opening. The informal economy is a source of employment and income for workers, but it is unrecognized and suffers from lower productivity. Wealth in China as of 2020, China was second in the world after the US. The total number of billionaires and the total number of millionaires with 698 Chinese billionaires and 4.4 million millionaires. In 2019, China overtook the US as the home to the highest number of people who have a net personal wealth of at least 110,000 according to the Global Wealth Report by Credit Suisse. According to the Huru Global Rich List 2020, China is the home to five of the world's top 10 cities, Beijing, Shanghai, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, and Guangzhou, in the first, third, fourth, fifth, and tenth spots, respectively, by the highest number of billionaires, which is more than any other country. China had 85 female billionaires as of January 2021, 
two thirds of the global total and minted 24 new female billionaires in 2020. However, it ranks behind over 60 countries out of around 190 in per capita economic output, making it an upper middle income country. According to the IMF, on a per capita income basis among countries with a large population of over 100 million as of 2021, China ranked third by GDP per capita nominal and fifth by GDP per capita PPP. Additionally, its development is highly uneven. Its major cities and coastal areas are far more prosperous compared to rural and interior regions. China brought more people out of extreme poverty than any other country in history. Between 1978 and 2018, China reduced extreme poverty by 800 million. China reduced the extreme poverty rate per international standard. It refers to an income of less than $1.90 per day from 88% in 1981 to 1.85% by 2013. According to the World Bank, number of Chinese in extreme poverty fell from 756 million to 25 million between 1990 and 2013. The portion of people in China living below the international poverty line of $1.90 per day fell to 0.3% in 2018 from 66.3% in 1990, using the lower middle income poverty line of $3.20 per day, the portion fell to 2.9% in 2018 from 90% in 1990. Using the upper middle income poverty line of $5.5 per day, the portion fell to 17% from 98.3% in 1990. Using the upper middle income poverty line of $5.50 per day, the portion fell to 17% from 98.3% in 1990. Class and Income Inequality China has had the world's largest middle class population since 2015 and the middle class grew to a size of 400 million by 2018. In 2020, a study by the Brookings Institution forecast that China's middle class will reach 1.2 billion by 2027, almost four times the entire US population today, making up one fourth of the world total. From 1978 to 2018, the average standard of living multiplied by a factor of 26. Wages in China have grown a lot in the last 40 years. Real inflation adjusted wages grew sevenfold from 1978 to 2007. Per capita income has risen significantly. When the People's Republic of China was founded in 1949, per capita income in China was one fifth of the world average. Per capita incomes now equal the world average itself. By 2018, median wages in Chinese cities such as Shanghai were about the same or as high than or higher than the wage in Eastern Europe countries. From 1978 to 2018, the average standard of living multiplied by a factor of 26. Wages in China have grown a lot in the last 40 years. Real wages grew sevenfold from 1978 to 2007. Per capita incomes have risen significantly. When the People's Republic of China was founded in 1949, per capita income in China was one fifth of the world average per capita income, now equal the world average itself. By 2018, median wages in Chinese cities such as Shanghai were about the same as or higher than the wages in Eastern European countries. China has the world's highest number of billionaires with nearly 878 as of October 2020. 
increasing at the rate of roughly five per week. China has a high level of economic inequality, which has increased in the last few decades. In 2018, China's gene coefficient was 0.467 according to the World Bank. Infrastructure After decades long infrastructure boom, China has produced numerous world leading infrastructure projects. China has the world's largest bullet train network, the most super tall skyscrapers in the world, the world's largest power plant, the largest energy generation capacity in the world, a global satellite navigation system with the largest number of satellites in the world, and has initiated the Belt and Road Initiative, a large global infrastructure building initiative with funding on the order of 50 to 100 billion dollars per year. The Belt and Road Initiative could be one of the largest development plans in modern history. Science and Technology Since the end of the Cultural Revolution, China has made significant investment in scientific research and is quickly catching up with the US in the research and development spending. In 2017, China spent 279 billion dollars on scientific research and development. According to the OECD, China spent 2.11% of its GDP on research and development in 2016. Science and technology are seen as vital for achieving China's economic and political goals and are held as a source of national pride to a degree sometimes described as techno-nationalism. According to the World Intellectual Property Indicators, China received 1.54 million patent applications in 2018, representing nearly half of patent applications worldwide, more than the double of the US. In 2019, China was number one in international patent application. China was ranked 12th, third in Asia and Oceania region, and second for countries with population of over 100 million in the Global Innovation Index in 2021. It has increased its ranking considerably since 2013, where it was ranked 35th. China ranks first global in the important indicators including patents, utility models, trademarks, industrial designs, and creative good exports, and it also has two of the global top five science and technology clusters, which is more than any other country. Chinese tech companies Huawei and ZTE were the top two filers of international patents in 2017. Chinese-born academicians have won the Nobel Prize in Physics four times, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, Nobel Prize in Medicine and Fields Medal once respectively, though most of them conducted their prizes winning research in Western nations. China is developing its education system with the emphasis on science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. In, in 2009, China graduated over 10,000 PhD engineers and as many as 500,000 BSc graduates more than any other country. China also became the world's largest publisher of scientific papers since 2016. Chinese technology companies such as Huawei, Xiaomi, and Lenovo have become world leaders in telecommunications, consumer electronics, and personal computing, and Chinese supercomputers are consistently ranked among the world's most powerful. China has been the world's largest market for industrial robots since 2013 and will account for 45% of newly installed robots from 2019 to 2021. The Chinese space program is one of the world's most active. In 1970, China launched its first satellite, Dongfang Hong Wan, becoming the fifth country to do so independently. In 2003, China became the third country to independently send humans into space, with Yang Liwei space flight aboard Shenzhou 5 as of 2022. 14 Chinese nationals have journeyed into space, including two women. In 2011, China launched its first space station test bed, Tiangong-1. In 2013, China successfully landed the Chang'e 3 lander and U-2 rover onto the lunar surface. 
In 2016, the first quantum science satellite was launched in partnership with Austria, dedicated to testing the fundamentals of quantum communication in space. In 2019, China became the first country to land a probe Chang'e 4 on the far side of the moon. In 2020, the first experimental 6G test satellite was launched, and Chang'e 5 successfully returned moon samples to the Earth making China the third country to do so independently after the United States and Soviet Union. In 2021, China became the second nation in history to independently land rover on Mars, joining the United States. Currently, China is building its own space station, Tiangong, in low Earth orbit. The construction of the space station is targeted to be completed by the end of 2022 with the launch of two new modules, telecommunications. China is the largest telecom market in the world and currently has the largest number of active cell phones of any country in the world, with over 1.5 billion subscribers as of 2018. It also has the world's largest number of internet and broadband users, with over 800 million internet users as for 2018, equivalent to around 60% of its population, and almost all of them being mobile as well. By 2018, China had more than 1 billion 4G users, accounting for 40% of world's total. China is making rapid advances in 5G. By late 2018, China had started a large-scale and commercial 5G trios. China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom are the three large providers of mobile and internet in China. China Telecom alone served more than 144 million broadband subscribers and 300 million mobile users. China Unicom had about 300 million subscribers and China Mobile, the largest of them, had 925 million users as of 2018. Combined, the three operators had over 3.4 million 4G base stations in China. Several Chinese telecommunication companies, most notably Huawei and ZTE, have been accused of spying for Chinese military. China has developed its own satellite navigation system, dubbed Beidou, which began offering commercial navigation services across Asia in 2012 as well as global services by the end of 2018. Upon the completion of the 35th Beidou satellite which was launched into orbit on 23rd June 2020, Beidou followed GPS and GLONASS as the third completed global navigation satellite in the world. Transport Since the late 1990s, China's national road network has been significantly expanded through the creation of a network of national highways and expressways. In 2018, China's highways had reached a total length of 142,500 kilometers, making it the longest highway system in the world. China has the world's largest market for automobiles, having surpassed the United States in both auto sales and production. A side effect of the rapid growth of China's road network has been significantly rise in traffic accidents. Though the number of fatalities in traffic accidents fell by 20% from 2007 to 2017, in urban areas bicycles remain a common mode of transport, despite the increasing prevalence of automobiles. As of 2012, there are approximately 470 million bicycles in China. China's high-speed rail system started construction in the early 2000s. By the end of 2020, high-speed rail in China had reached 37,900 kilometers of dedicated lines alone, making it the longest high-speed rail network in the world. Services on the Beijing, Shanghai, Beijing, Tianjin, and Chengdu Chongqing lines reached up to 350 km per hour, making them the fastest conversion high-speed railway services in the world, with an annual readership of over 2.29 billion passengers in 2019, 
it is the world's busiest. The network includes the Beijing Guangzhou Shenzhen High Speed Railway, the single longest high speed rail line in the world, and the Beijing Shanghai High Speed Railway, which has three of the longest railroad bridges in the world. The Shanghai Maglev train, which reaches 431 km per hour, is the fastest commercial train in service in the world. Since 2000, the growth of rapid transit system in Chinese cities has accelerated. As of January 2021, 44 Chinese cities have urban mass transit system in operation and 39 more have metro system approved. As of 2020, China boosts the five longest metro system in the world with the networks of Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, Chengdu and Shenzhen being the largest. There were approximately 229 airports in 2017 with the round 240 planned by 2020. China has over 2,000 river and sea ports, about 130 of which are open to foreign shipping. In 2017, the ports of Shanghai, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Ningbo, Chushan, Guangzhou, Qingdao, and Tianjin ranked in the top 10 in the world in container traffic and cargo tonnage. Culture since ancient times, Chinese culture has been heavily influenced by Confucianism. For much of the country's dynastic era, opportunities for social advancement could be provided by high performance in the prestigious imperial examinations, which have their origins in the Han Dynasty. The literary emphasis of the exams affected the general perception of cultural refinement in China such as the belief that calligraphy, poetry, and painting were higher forms of art than dancing or drama. Chinese culture has long emphasized a sense of deep history and largely inward-looking national perspective. Examinations in the culture of merit remain greatly valued in China today. The first leaders of the People's Republic of China were born into the traditional imperial order but were influenced by the May Fourth Movement and reformist ideas. They sought to change some traditional aspects of Chinese culture, such as rural land tenure sexism and Confucianist system of education, while preserving others such as the family structure, the culture of obedience to the state. Some observers see the period following the establishment of the People's Republic of China in 1949 as a continuation of traditional Chinese dynastic history, while others claim that the Communist Party's rule has damaged the foundation of Chinese culture, especially through political movements such as the Cultural Revolution of the 1960s, where many aspects of traditional culture were destroyed, having been denounced as regressive and harmful or vestiges of federalism. Many important aspects of traditional Chinese morals and culture such as Confucianism, art, literature and performing arts like painting, opera, were altered to conform to government policies and propaganda at the time. Today the Chinese government has accepted numerous elements of traditional Chinese culture as being integral to Chinese society. With the rise of Chinese nationalism and the end of the Cultural Revolution, various reforms of traditional Chinese art, literature, music, film, fashion, and architecture have been seen vigorous revival. And folk and variety art in particular have sparked interest nationally and even worldwide. With the rise of Chinese nationalism and the end of the Cultural Revolution, various forms of traditional Chinese art literature, music, film, fashion, and architecture have seen a vigorous revival, and folk and variety art in particular have sparked interest nationally and even worldwide. Tourism China received 55.7 million inbound international visitors in 2010, and in 2012 was the third most visited country in the world. 
It also experiences an enormous volume of domestic tourists and estimated 740 million Chinese holiday makers traveled within the country in October 2012. China hosts the world's second largest number of World Heritage Sites, 56 after Italy, and is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the world, first in the Asia-Pacific literature. Chinese literature is based on the literature of the Chu dynasty. Concepts covered with the Chinese classic texts present a wide range of thoughts and subjects including calendar, military, astrology, herbology, geography, and many others. Some of the most important early texts include Wang Qing and the Shu Jing within the four books and five classics, which served as the Confucian authoritative books for the state-sponsored curriculum in dynastic era. Inherited from the classic of poetry, classical Chinese poetry developed to its florid during the Tang dynasty. Li Bai and Du Fu opened the folking ways for the poetic cycles through romanticism and realism respectively. Chinese historiography began with the Shiji, the overoscope of the historiographical tradition in China is termed the 24 Historians, which set a vast stage for Chinese fictions along with Chinese mythology and folklore. Pushed by a burgeoning citizen class in the Ming Dynasty, Chinese classical fiction rose to a boom of the historical. Town and gods and demons fictions as represented by the four great classical novels which include Water Margin, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, Journey to the West, Dream of the Red Chamber, along with the Wuxia fiction of Jing Wong and Liang Yusheng. It remains an enduring source of popular culture in the East Asia culture sphere. In the wake of the new culture movement, after the end of the Qing dynasty, Chinese literature embarked on a new era with written vernacular Chinese for older citizens. Ku Xing and Lu Xun were pioneers in modern literature. Various literary genres such as misty poetry, scar literature, young adult fiction, and Xunzhen literature which is influenced by magic realism emerged following the Cultural Revolution. Moyan, a Xunzhen literature author, was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 2012. Cuisine Chinese cuisine is highly diverse, drawing on several millennia of culinary history and geographical variety, in which the most influential are known as the eight major cuisines, including Sichuan, Cantonese, Jiangsu, Shandong, Fujian, Hunan, Ahui and Chejiang cuisines. All of them are featured by the precise skills of shaping, heating, and flavoring. Chinese cuisine is also known for its weak cooking methods and ingredients, as well as food therapy that is emphasized by traditional Chinese medicine. Generally, Chinese staple food is rice in the south, wheat based breads and noodles in the north. The diet of the common people in pre-modern times was largely grain and sip vegetables with meat reserved for special occasions. The bean products such as tofu and soy milk remain as popular source of protein. Pork is now the most popular meat in China, accounting for the about three-fourths of the country's total meat consumption. While pork dominates the meat market, there is also the vegetarian Buddhist cuisine and the pork-free Chinese Islamic cuisine. Southern cuisine, due to the area's proximity to the ocean and milder climate, has a wide variety of seafood and vegetables. It differs in many respects from the wheat-based diets across dry northern China. Numerous offshoots of Chinese food, such as Hong Kong cuisine and American Chinese food, has emerged in the nations that play host to Chinese diaspora. Music Chinese music covers a highly diverse range of music from traditional music to modern music. Chinese music dates back before the pre-imperial times. Traditional Chinese musical instruments were traditionally grouped into eight categories known as Bain. 
Traditional Chinese opera is a form of musical theater in China, originating thousands of years and has regional style forms such as Beijing opera and Cantonese opera. Chinese pop or sea pop includes Mando pop and Canto pop, Chinese rap, Chinese hip hop, and Hong Kong hip hop have become popular in contemporary times. Cinema Cinema was first introduced to China in 1896 and the first Chinese film Ding Jun Mountain was released in 1905. China has the largest number of movie screens in the world since 2016. China became the largest cinema market in the world in 2020. The top three highest grossing films in China currently are Euphoria 2 in 2017, Nature in 2019, and The Wandering Earth in 2019. Fashion Hanfu is the historical clothing of the Han people in China. The Qin Pao or Cheong Sam is a popular Chinese female dress. The Hanfu movement has been popular in contemporary times and seeks to revitalize Hanfu clothing. Sports China has one of the oldest sporting cultures in the world. There is evidence that archery was practiced during the Western Chu dynasty. So what play and Chuju, a sport loosely related to association football that backed China's early dynasties as well. Physical fitness is widely emphasized in Chinese culture, with morning exercises such as Qing Gong, Tai Chi Chuan widely practiced and commercial gyms and private fitness clubs are gaining popularity across the country. Basketball is currently the most popular spectator sport in China. The Chinese Basketball Association and the American National Basketball Association have a huge following among the people with native or ethnic Chinese players such as Yao Ming and Yi Jian Yang, held in high esteem. China's professional football league, now known as Chinese Super League, was established in 1994. It is the largest football market in Asia. Other popular sports in the country include martial arts, table tennis, badminton, swimming, and snooker. Board games such as Go, Xiangqi, Mahjong, and more recently Chase are also played at a professional level. In addition, China is home to a huge number of cyclists with an estimated 470 million bicycles as of 2012. Many more traditional sports such as dragon boat racing, Mongolian style wrestling, and horse racing are also popular. China has participated in the Olympic Games since 1932, although it has only participated as the People's Republic of China since 1952. China hosted the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing, where its athletes received 48 gold medals, the highest number of gold medals of any participating nation that year. China also won the most medals of any nation at 2012 Summer Paralympics with 231 overall including 95 gold medals. In 2011, Shenzhen in Guangdong, China hosted the 2011 Summer Universiade. China hosted the 2013 Eastern Asian Games in Tianjin and 2014 Summer Youth Olympics in Nanjing, the first country to host both regular and youth Olympics. Beijing and its nearby city, Changjiangku of Hebei Province collaboratively hosted the 2022 Olympic Winter Games, making Beijing the first dual Olympic city in the world by holding both the Summer Olympics and the Five facts about China. Number five, it's a myth. Ancient Chinese armies used armor made from paper that could give the same protection as steel armor. Curry spoke with antique armor expert Greg Martin, who explained that paper armor was in use as early as 600 BC and was built up from layers that may have been impregnated with raisin. Number four. More than 30 million people in China live in caves, called Yaodong in Chinese. 
most of which are the Shanxi province. The poorer soil in the mountainous region is easy to dig, allowing people to build energy efficient homes. Number three, the Great Wall has stood for centuries thanks to sticky rice. Remarkably strong architecture. In one of the greatest technological innovations of the Ming Dynasty, workers developed sticky rice mortar. They crafted it from a mixture of slaked lime, a standard ingredient in mortar, and sweet rice flour. Number 2. Traditionally, Chinese babies wear kaidanku, literally open crouch pants, instead of diapers. Open crotch pants, also known as open crotch trousers or split pants, are worn by toddlers throughout mainland China, often made of thick fabric. They are designed with either an unsewn seam over the buttocks and crotch or a hole over the central. Number 1. Toilet paper was invented in China. Can you imagine a world without toilet paper? I prefer not to. This simple invention is something we often take off for granted. But if it was not for the ancient Chinese in the 6th century AD, this necessity may never have been invented. The paper had been known as warping and padding material in China since the 2nd century BC. The first documented use of toilet paper in human history dates back to the 6th century AD in early medieval China. Thank you for watching this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share to get more videos and please remember to comment to tell us what or which country you would want us to talk about in the next video. Thank you.